Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Behind me I have a 2006 Ford Escape. It's a V6 model, four wheel drive. Customer complaint is lights on on the dash. No drivability complaint, just a couple warning lights. Let me see, he said the ABS light has been on for a while. And now the four wheel drive light, let's see if we can that guy right there has been flashing intermittently while driving. So first step, I got the Varus hooked up. Scan for codes. <clears throat> so let's uh, start from, from the main menu here. So let's go to the ABS. Codes menu, memory codes. We have a U2023 communication network fault. Uh, not too worried about that for now. But we have a C1234, which is a right front wheel speed sensor input missing. Okay, and let's go to our transfer case. Check out what, what that four wheel drive light is all about. Codes, memory codes. And we have a U0415 invalid data received from ABS control module. So that must be related to our ABS problem. So at this point, I want to track down this right front wheel speed sensor code. And then we'll see if we fix everything else, uh, if we get that taken care of. So back to the ABS. Uh, let's go to just see if we have some info here on this code from the troubleshooter. See, it was a C1234. Sensoring generate a square wave signal to the ABS module proportional to the wheel speed. So it looks like a square wave signal, that's a digital type. ABS sensor. Let's see. And then I guess this thing has, I don't know if it has traction control or not, but <laughs> there's your list of possible causes. I mean, not, not that helpful. What might be more helpful is the component test meter. If it'll actually show what voltages we're supposed to see on, on the sensor wires. So let's go to our component test meter. See escape, three liter, ABS, component information. All right, here we go. Uh, so that's pretty general information. Three channel system. All right, here we go. Two pin connector. Right and left front wheel speed sensors, minus and plus. Some sensors fail intermittently. Okay, I mean, that was pretty, uh, let's see, signature test. What is this waveform supposed to look like? So that doesn't look like a square wave to me. That just looks like a regular variable reluctance type, you know, little magnet. Picks up the tone ring. So I think what we have to do now is go to that right front wheel speed sensor, plug in our scope, and see if we uh, have any signal there. Before we get the scope out, I just want to see what this thing does in a little test drive. So we go right front, that's what we're interested in. There's left front, grab that too. Left rear, right rear. All right, let's see.
notice our ABS light is off right now. That's pretty cool. You see the dropouts in the right front wheel speed sensor there? See how even the other ones are? That's pretty cool. So, the sensor itself doesn't look to be dead. It looks like it's having some uh, some glitches. So potentially, we could even have a uh, you know broken tone ring or something. Again, the scope will tell us that for sure. But I want to take this for a test drive. You know, bumpy road. See if it drops out completely or not, or if this code is being set by just this. Uh, you know, noisy signal. If it drops out completely, then we're going after a sensor or wiring problem. But if it's just, uh, you know, this hashy signal, then uh, we would suspect a cracked tone ring, something along that line. Shut up. Oh, some big dropouts right there. It's pretty smooth right now. So I'm wondering if these dropouts happen more at low speed or high speed. Get some dropouts right there. So in this case, the importance of a test drive can't be understated. So ju you know, just based on a code, if a signal's missing, doesn't mean it's missing all the time. And the other variable is, you know, get up to speed here, maybe it's a bad wheel bearing. There you go. Got ABS, four-wheel drive, four drive lights flashing. There's our signal. It has dropouts even at speed. So it's a reproducible problem, which is good. drops out all the way I'll turn the camera back on but for now you see you see what we need to see all right I got the I don't know what is this a car truck crossover vehicle up on jack stands and let me show you what I found under here well first we got a oil leak that's not that's not what it's here for second I uh, jiggled the wheel and sure enough the uh, lower ball joints loose I mean, terrible, 85,000 miles. And what we're here to see is the tone ring, visual inspection. Right there. There she is. Cracked. There it is, cracked tone ring out right on the CV axle, right there. So, just for education, I guess uh, we could put a scope on this wheel speed sensor. But in this case, the, you know, just a test drive, looking at the right data, and knowing something about the system, plus just, you know, experience and visual inspection that led us straight to the problem. It was literally a five minute diagnosis. Uh, so let's let's throw the scope on the wheel speed sensor. I think the connector is somewhere uh, right here in the 
the wheel well. See it comes up. And there it is in this well, pain in the butt to get to. Some hoses in the way. Maybe we'll plug in the scope, spin the wheel, see what that broken tone ring, uh, you know, see what it looks like. My camera would focus. <clears throat> and uh, I guess that'll be that. So I'll quote him for a ball joint and, <laughs> and the tone ring. And uh, we'll get her back on the road. Alright, I got the scope hooked up to one of the two wires over there. And with the key uh, off, it was showing zero volts. But with the key on, we got battery voltage. You spin the wheel, you can see a little square wave riding over the top of that DC signal. So what we want to do in this case, make it more visible, is we can uh, you know, increase the time base, spin the wheel a little faster. But what we really need to do is AC couple this signal because you, know, you can drag it down here but you know it's not a picoscope you can't just zoom in on the <clears throat> on the DC scale so let's AC couple it bring it up here drop the voltage scale down it's a little better even more it's hashy let's do filter Nice. Now if we spin this at a consistent speed, we should be able to pick up the uh, broken tone ring. So I'm going to try to spin it at a constant speed here. I don't know if that's going to work. Let's pause that. Zoom in on it. See if we can pick out the the broken tooth or whatever. So I guess there it is. Can you see it? Right there. It's much harder to see on this digital wave because the signal is either on or off. You don't get the VRS type, you know, true magnetic signal that'll tell you if your tone ring, you know, for example, the gap is changing or if there's an actual gap between the teeth. Here, you need a consistent wheel speed and just look at the spacing between our you know square waves like right there it's not like I slowed down the wheel for just one step so in this case it is hard to pick out <clears throat> yeah see the the wheel just slowed down there for a little bit so that's in one of the wires let me check the voltage on the other wire so I got a little more consistent capture. You can see right there, if you zoom out, one, two, three, you can see that gap. But if you zoom in, it becomes a little hard to tell, right? I mean, you can see that step is a little bigger than the rest of them. But like I said, a couple of tricks with the scope to make it more visible. You can kind of see it right there. This is probably the best scale. One, two, three, four, and so on. So that's as good as uh, capture as we're going to get. So I back probed the second wire, and this one is just a constant ground. Okay, you spin the wheel, nothing happens. That's a good ground. So nothing wrong with the wiring, nothing wrong with the sensor. Obviously, it's just a cracked tone ring in this case. But that's how you check a uh, digital digital wheel speed sensor right so the actual wave rides on top of bias voltage which is that battery voltage in this case <clears throat> and then uh, you know from there 
our component test meter, I guess, was inaccurate. It was saying the signature should be, uh, you know, like an AC uh, traditional VRS type wave, but in this case, it is it is a digital signal. So there you go. Maybe if uh, I'm sure I'll get the job here once this is all fixed, we can take it for another spin. But uh, the repair is uh, is just nuts and bolts, right? <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.